So in this one, we're going to talk about how to find the key of a song or a sample using stock plugins in Ableton Live, and you can do this in any DAW, and we're about to dive into it right now. But before we do all that, please remember to subscribe and like this video for future tutorials, and let's dive into it. How are we doing, my friends? Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about how to find the key of a song using Ableton Live. I'm going to try to stick with all Ableton Live plugins just so that you can follow along and do this if you have Ableton Live and if you have a different DAW, you can also, this also translates over there, you just have to figure out exactly how to do it in your DAW. Okay, so what we're going to do first, I've pulled in a sample that I have made. Okay, so we have no idea what the key of the song is. We're going to find out. What we're going to do first is we're going to pull in a spectrum analyzer that is stocked within Ableton. This is going to show you basically the entire frequency spectrum and where all the peaks and valleys and where the notes are living. So if you open it up all the way, we're going to hit play. What we're going to do first is find a peak point closest to the left that is very prominent. And in this case, if you look right here, see this is a peak. These are all peaks right here. So if we hover over the first peak, this is a good place to start. This isn't necessarily the answer to every uh, every melody, but in this case, let's just do this. This is a good place to start. We're going to hover over that, and we're going to find that it's a G2, right? So if you look in the bottom left corner of the Spectrum Analyzer, it says 200 hertz G2. So that's a good place to start. Let's just assume that this sample is in G. And also, if you know music theory, this is another good step. You can hover over the other peaks to find out if all those notes fall under the key of G, okay? But if we don't, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to hover over this. So we found our G. That's a, that's a good starting point. We're going to pull up an instrument. You can use anything, a piano or whatever works. Just use something basic and simple and not too abstract. In this case, I'm just going to pull up Serum, and I'm just going to use a basic triangle wave. Again, you don't need Serum. You can use anything. What we're going to do is we're going to find the key G on our keyboard. If you don't know how to find that, you're going to have to look it up online and look how a piano keyboard is laid out. But anyways, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that note that we found, in this case is a G, and we're going to hold it down and play it through the entire sample. And if it works through the entire sample, it's safe to say that this is the key of the song. Okay, so let's do that. That's pretty annoying, but you get the point. Like, that worked through the entire thing, right? It sounded like it was supposed to, it belongs in that scale. Let me show you what happens when you play something that's out of it, out of the key. So let's, let's try a C. Right off the bat, that doesn't sound right, so you know that's not right. Yep, that kind of works because D is in the, the key of G. It's safe to say that this, this, uh, this sample is in the key of G, right? Another way to verify this, if we pull up an arpeggiator in Ableton, you got to find out how to play a triad of this key. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down this triad chord and see if it arpeggiates through the whole sample and works. So we're going to do a G major first. So that something sounds weird there, right? So what we're going to do next is we're going to try, we're still going to try G, but we're going to try the minor scale. So let's do that. And that works. That sounds all correct. It sounds like all those notes belong in that key. That's another way to just clarify to make sure that you are in the key that you think that is in. And so in this case, in this sample, I think we've got a G minor. And I just know it's a G minor because I made this I made this uh, sample, but that is the way that you find out. You look at your spectrum analyzer and you look at what frequencies are peaking and then you start playing around with that. Okay, so this is a good place to start. I'm not saying this is necessarily true every time, but a lot of music today 
the first chord of the song, so like this, is going to be the root note of the scale that you're going to want to find. So that's a good place to start. Even if it's not the root note, that note is going to be within the same scale that it's in. I know it's a little confusing, but if you need any help, you can email me at wave, W-A-V dot formation at gmail.com. If you have any questions, there's also tons of great tutorials on YouTube that teach teaches you music theory. Um, you just need to know the basics of music theory to, I feel like, to really help you in your production. You don't necessarily need it. There's tons of people that don't need it, but I think that knowing music theory, at least the bare minimum, will really help you in your production. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this useful. There's plenty more tutorials and plenty more music production material coming up in this channel. I'm just getting started, so I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>